hey guys what's up everyone welcome or welcome back to another video tutorial from the ap3x institute of mathematics education this channel primarily focuses on contents related to the csec ccslc sea exam curriculum all right and in today's tutorial which is part one of three parts we're going to be covering extensively the topic of coordinate geometry we're going to be going through every single details as it relates to this particular topic here with a fine tooth comb and we're going to ensure that you get a variety of basic intermediate and advanced examples that will give you a complete guide and of course, regardless of whatever type of questions that may present itself on an exam paper, with this tutorial, you will be able to uh, master this topic. All right. Now, for future tutorials that are coming out as it relates to the CSEC topics, you can definitely get access to a few of those on the channel by smashing the subscribe button below, turning on the post notification bell. All right. If you get some value from the content, leave me a like and of course, leave your questions, comments, suggestions down into the comment section below. All right. So we're going to get right into the video without further ado. And then we're going to learn a lot about this topic called coordinate geometry. Let's go. All right, guys. So starting off with a very basic definition here that coordinate geometry is basically a branch on the mathematic tree or the mathematics tree that primarily focuses on everything that is related to a straight line right we focus primarily on everything that has to do with a straight line now as it relates to the topic there's a bunch of sub 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 topics that really comes with this and first thing that we're actually going to be looking at is in fact, how to draw a straight line on a grid, how to find the gradient of a line, how to find the length of a line, the midpoint of a line, how to find the equation of a line given a pair of points, given a point, given the intercept, given the gradient, how to find the x and y intercepts, how to determine the coordinates of a point, finding the equation of a parallel line and a perpendicular line or bisector. So all this plus more is coming up in this complete tutorial video in three parts so we're going to be going for about an hour here all right for about an hour and so tune in guys and let's get right into our topics here all right now we're going to start off pretty much by understanding a very fundamental concept here that relates to what is a point all right what is a point what exactly are we math teachers talking about when it comes to a point so a point basically is a location or a starting point of a shape or an object that is drawn in open space or it's drawn on a plane or on a grid all right that's basically what a point is all right? it's a location a point well, that is supposed to be represented, guys. A point is represented by a pair of ordered values, all right? And we call these ordered values, we refer to them as coordinates, all right? And usually, they are written in the form x, comma, y. That's typically how we would write our point here, x, comma, y, all right? So the first number given a point is always representing your x coordinate, or your x ordinate and the second value here always refer to your y ordinate all right and together they are called coordinates okay now basically when you're given this point here right this location here it pretty much determines the exact location of the point on a grid or on a plane all right very important that a point has no dimensions such as length width height or thickness so pretty much we use like a full stop like this and we usually label it with a capital letter p a b c as you see here on screen all right that is how we typically label a point now once we have a clear understanding of what is a point then we can now therefore look at what is a line now a line is basically a series of points that are connected by a straight 
part. That's the definition or the simplest definition for what is a line, right? It's basically like a bunch of points that are on a grid, but they are connected in a straight path. All right points can also be connected on a curve which of course you would know that that is called a circle we're not talking about the circle now we're just going to be focusing on the line itself now a line can easily be drawn by connecting any two points now you even though we know that a line is a series of points you don't need a series of points to draw a line all you need is any two lines that are in a straight path and that is how we get a line so here's an example here we have a a line that is that is traveling infinitely in both directions and here we have point a and we have point b and once you're able to connect a and b and extend in both direction you will find yourself getting a line all right so so far two very important concepts as we move on to the next phase of coordinate geometry now uh earlier i had mentioned something to you about what is a plane or a grid and so basically in coordinate geometry we refer to the plane or the grid as being the cartesian plane all right and a good representation of the cartesian plane is actually a graph paper a graph paper is what we use to draw our cartesian plane on now, it, it would be good for you that as you're watching this tutorial, you have your own graph papers and you're following along as I demonstrate. All right. Don't just watch the video. Work along with the video. Pause the video. Attempt some of the problem questions. Then replay the video to see if my solution matches yours. All right. Now, what is the Cartesian plane? The Cartesian plane is a grid forward slash a graph that helps us to identify the exact location of a point. All right. Now, basically, it, it 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 forms a relationship between two specific variables, and these two specific variables are an x variable and a y variable. All right. So the plane is formed basically by a vertical and a horizontal axis intersecting um, each other. Basically. All right. So we have the vertical axis here. And you're gonna learn you're gonna learn down here that it's called the y-axis and we have the horizontal axis here which is called the x-axis and usually we just kind of use like a one-to-one -one scale the scale can be changed depending on the, the the nature of the question but for the most part we usually label our axis using a one-to-one -one scale what does one-to-one -one scale mean it means that for every one unit or every one stroke here it represents a unit of one along the axis so as you can see if i'm to zoom up here you will see that here is one this is two this is three this is four and here you can see i've already labeled five for you not to just make it a bit clustered but i've just labeled um the obvious point five and ten negative five and negative ten <clears throat> Right now, it says here that the horizontal axis that's the one that is lying down this way here. The horizontal axis is known as your x axis, and the vertical axis is called your y axis. Now, in the future, you're going to hear um, other math teachers, other YouTube channels, or even myself, I may refer to the x axis as being what is known as the co domain, and as well as. Sorry, pardon me, I'm going to refer to the x-axis as being the domain and refer to the y-axis as being the co-domain or sometimes referred to as the range. But that's for a later tutorial. We're going to elaborate more on that. All right. Now, the point at which the x and the y-axis intersects is known as your origin. So right here is what we refer to as being our origin. Okay. So here we go, just a second here, guys. So right at this point here, we're going to refer to this as being our origin here, All right? And just a second here, guys. All right, here we go. So here, this is called our origin, guys, okay? 
all right and so the coordinates of the origin and this is something that you need to remember guys is that the coordinates of the origin is labeled as zero zero all right zero on your x and zero on your y okay all right good so we've gotten that clear now the cartesian coordinate system was in fact implemented by Rene Descartes from France all right which was which as before was used to find a specific location of a point all right so the Cartesian plane here right Rene Descartes uh, actually invented this particular mathematical model and so from back in the 18th century this is what we have been using to determine the location of a point all right really brilliant invention here by Rene Descartes all right now um a point is basically uh, well a point basically comes in a pair and since there are two variables involved with you labeling or identifying a point then basically you must plot on the cartesian plane the x value first whatever that value is all right it will tell you the direction followed by the y value very very important guys you understand that when you're plotting a point or you're reading the point from the graph you're always reading or plotting the x ordinate first followed by the y ordinate next so you always travel along the x axis being your first movement and after you've made that first movement then wherever you stop, you're going to take an upwards or a downwards movement to plot your point. All right. Now here, for example, we can read off the point A. If we were to look at this particular Cartesian plane here and we, we are trying to find the location point for A, we would say, let's zoom up here for you guys. So A here, we'd have to travel from the center here and we go one, two, three, four five six so we basically stop at six all right and then now you realize that we stop at six because we are right underneath the point a so we then travel up now that's one two three four five six seven eight so the coordinate value of the point a is in fact six comma positive Eight. all right beautiful now let's have a look at point b here again we come from the center and we begin to count in the direction that takes us to b so that's going to be one two three four five and again this is six but because we're traveling to the left of the cartesian plane that becomes minus six and then we're going to take a couple of steps up that is one two we're right at B here. So basically the coordinate value of the point B here is negative six comma two. All right, and finally now, let's have a look at the point C, back to the center again, and then we start to count. That's one, two, three, four, and then we're right above C now. So we take steps down, that's one, two, three, Four. So we traveled in the right direction, which is positive four, and we traveled in a downward direction that is negative four. So the coordinate value of C here is four comma minus four. All right. That is basically how you read off the point from the graph. All right. So as you can see here, it says usually the scale on the axis is a one by one unit so depending on the objective of the question you may have to change it depending on how large or small the values of the coordinates are but for the most part normally we just use a one to one scale all right all right guys so i hope that you guys are following so far and you've gotten your fundamentals down let's continue to progress to this uh, very interesting concept here known as coordinate geometry all right so leave a like if you haven't done so as yet guys let's jump right into another section here now how to read the cartesian plane the right side and the left side we have already demonstrated that by plotting our points or sorry pardon me reading off the points of the graph but let's just get 
some theory behind what we have done. The right side that is over here, all right, so the right side that's over here, let me just take this out here, guys. All right, so here we go. I'm just saving the document here, guys, pardon me. All right, so the right over here, all right, so the right side of the Cartesian plane and the left side of the Cartesian plane here, or of the origin, is your x-axis, this line here. So this is the positive side of the x-axis, and over here is the negative side of the x-axis, okay? And that's what it's saying right here. Positive and negative integers together are called x-coordinates. Now, above and below the y-axis, or the, I should say the origin, right? Above and below, here and down here, that's called your y-axis, here and here, down here. So, so uh, this is the origin, above and below, you're going to find also positive and negative integers. So above, positive, below, negative. Very, very important that you understand how to draw your Cartesian plane properly. All right. Now, a simple way of I mean, there's so many different ways that you can actually look at this, but a simple way for me personally of visualizing and understanding the Cartesian plane is to visualize the intersection of two number lines. All right. So basically, we're already familiar with what a number line is. All right. So if you take a horizontal number line and intersect it with a uh, vertical number line, then you're going to basically have your uh cartesian plane all right now prior to this we have already we have already learned how to read the points but again we can do some more practice here it says that in order to plot a point on the cartesian plane right in order for you to plot a point on the cartesian plane the x ordinate must be determined first all right followed by the y ordinate must be determined second all right. The same principle, as I had mentioned before, is applied when you're reading or indicating the coordinate values from the grid. So you would state the coordinate values of the point in that exact order. You would state it in a X and Y order, like X comma Y. Always like that you will name your points. Let's have some practice here. Let's look at this point right here. This is uh, the red red dot here. So you can see that the scale basically, as I mentioned to you before, has changed depending on the objective of the question. So we are now using what is known as a one to two unit scale here. So it's one unit, one block to represent two units. All right. So right in between here, right in between here would be one. All right. In the event. So here we're going to go across two units and we're going to go up four so this point value here would have been two comma four all right here we are going to look at the value over here this another red dot here so here we can see that we take two four six eight so that's negative eight units to our left and we actually take took two steps up reading from the scale here so we take two steps up remember that the scale guys is not the same as a one-to-one -one. so that's why as we go up a unit it's representing two because it's a one-to-two scale All right down here you can see that we have traveled four units to our left and we have traveled four units down so this basically becomes negative four comma negative Four. that's that point and here over here we have eight units you can see two four six eight and two units down so that's positive eight and negative two so in the future plotting a point will you will find yourself landing in one of those four spaces now in addition to you landing in a space then you can also find yourself landing exactly on the axis so for example here this point here this you can see that we didn't have to go to the left or we didn't have to go to the right 
we didn't have to move so basically this point here is saying that i traveled zero units on my x-axis but then i had to go up two units to get to my point here so that's zero two down here again i didn't have to travel left or right to get to this point here all i had to do was just travel zero units to my left or right and again i would have to travel as you can see here four units downwards all right over here a little bit vice versa to what we've been doing now i do not have to travel well i have to travel actually two four six eight i'm already at my location so here i would travel eight units on my x-axis but notice that i'm already at my point so i don't need to go up nor do i need to go down so that's going to be eight zero and over here naturally you're going to find that hey i'm going to travel four units to my left so that's negative four to my left and notice how i'm at my point already so i don't need to travel up or down so that is zero all right and that is basically the eight positions in which not eight specific position but eight places along the cartesian system which you can find yourself landing on a point all right so just be aware right of how to plot your points very very important right when we reach further into the concept you're going to definitely want to have this part down because there's more videos more topics we are gonna we are gonna have to plot points a lot. So it's a very very important concept for you to grasp. All right. So now that we have that laid down now and we are all comfortable with how to plot a point, leave a like, leave a comment if you have any suggestions down below, and let's move right along. All right. So we're twenty one minutes into our video here. Let's continue now and move on to some more important concepts in coordinate geometry. All right, now the location of a point will fall into one of the positions or it can fall exactly on an axis that was mentioned prior. All right, so as you can see here, those open spaces where you see me plotting the points here and here and here and here, you can see that they are labeled as quadrants. All right, those open spaces with the points are called quadrants. And you can see here that when we're labeling the quadrant, we label the quadrant in a counterclockwise direction. So this quadrant up here, which is the positive quadrant, all right, that quadrant there is called quadrant one all right and then we take an counterclockwise uh direction counterclockwise to label the remaining quadrants so over here would have been quadrant two down here would have been quadrant three which is basically my negative quadrant and of course over here finally is called quadrant four quadrant two and quadrant four is a mixture of x and sorry of negative and positive ordinates all right with here being the negative x ordinate and down here being the negative y ordinate all right now we're going to basically go on the graph and we're going to plot these points but before we do so we're going to predict in which quadrant would the point actually fall now i want you to pause the video here and of course leave a comment down below just before watching the video all right and let's just be honest here which quadrant would each of these six points fall do not plot it just look at the point and make an make a guesstimate all right so you would have made your guesstimate already and that's good if you've gotten all six correct thumbs up you are in fact grasping the concept now when we look at here negative two five you can see that the negative two is an x ordinate and the five is a positive ordinate so here we would find negative two over this side and we find positive five up here so if we were to go ahead and plot the point all right so that's here negative one negative two and up five one two three four five then you're gonna find here naturally that it falls into quadrant two all right quadrant two very good here three negative seven you're gonna find over here being three 
that's positive 3 that's 1 2 3 and down 7 that's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so right here location you're gonna find that that point here lands in the fourth quadrant okay next one here negative 1 negative 4 so that's negative 1 to this direction here and 4 up here 4 up here oh pardon me it's negative 1 here and negative 4 down here all right mistakes can be made guys but let's catch on to ourselves that falls in here our third quadrant and here 6 2 that is 6 2 you're right that is here and 2 up that's 1 2 this is falling in quadrant number 1 all right now for the other two additional points will it fall in a quadrant or will it fall on a line well once you see a zero involved in one of your coordinate values then more than likely if a zero is involved it's going to be falling on an axis let's see what axis this falls on zero on my x so that means i do not have to go left or right i do not have to go left or right but i have to go two steps up so i fall here on the positive y axis and negative 4 0 that is negative 4 in this direction here that's negative 4 here and again you can see I don't have to go up or down because my y value is 0 so here I'll fall it on the negative x axis all right so hopefully you guys really really got a hang so far of how to plot a point how to read a point from the Cartesian plane all right so we're gonna get right into it all right let's continue with our lesson now we're gonna move on now to we're getting close and close now guys into the really really important aspect of coordinate geometry but before we actually get into the calculation aspect we have one more concept that we need to fathom and that is how to actually draw a line all right now we did mention earlier by definition that a line is a series of points that are connected in a straight path again we are reiterating a line is drawn simply by connecting any two points on the grid but essentially the most two important points that you need to draw a line especially when it comes to the cartesian or the coordinate or the coordinate system or the cartesian plane there's only two specific points that's important, and that is the point at which it crosses the x-axis and, of course, the point at which it crosses the y-axis. Once you're able to determine those two points, then you're going to find it very easy to draw a line. Now, this concept is very, very important for you to grasp because in a later tutorial, which is known as the linear programming, you're going to find that this concept here of finding the x and y-intercept will play an important role later on so do stay tuned for that ensure that you are subscribed to the channel now a line usually is named by a single letter all right a single letter or most times you're going to find that we give the starting point of the line named it one capital letter and we also give the ending point of the line named with another capital letter so you may see we refer to line ab or line pq or line xt or line wy or variations of that sort so you are going to be naming a line most often than not with capital letters at the beginning and the end of the line okay now once we have that concept down now right we can basically move on to what is known as the slope the slope or most commonly referred to as the gradient of the line and so what is the gradient the gradient forward slash the slope right there are basically four ways in which a line can slope all right a slope can be negative all right and this is where you're basically going down a hill all right i'm gonna pull up a document for you in a moment for you to see so for me the easiest way to remember what a negative slope is me imagining myself going down a hill and of course a positive slope here is where i'm imagining myself going up a hill all right now we have what is known as an undefined slope it has absolutely it has a magnanimous gradient a gradient that is immeasurable 
and we also have a line here where the gradient here is zero or pretty much there is no slope zero gradient neutral slope all right now what is a slope what basically what's the definition of a slope a slope is the measure of the steepness of the line and its level of steepness occurred occurs as a result of a change in the y variable compared or with respect to the change in the x variable we're going to elaborate more on that in a moment but for the most part i just want you guys to take a picture mental picture of what the lines looks like when they are sloping we have a negative slope here a positive slope here an undefined slope here and a slope with a value of zero all right so here basically we're looking at the fact that the gradient formula and this is a graphical formula guys it is a change in y all right so it's the difference between the y values all right and a change in the difference between the x values of the line and here's a nice demonstration here for you x axis y axis here is my line here and the distance between the tip of the line and the base here is a change in y all right with respect to a change in x all right and that is how we measure our gradient so basically let's say that we end up with a gradient of say for example two-thirds what this what this uh, really means is that for every two units you move the line up along the y-axis there's going to be a change in three units on the x-axis that's basically what it means but we're gonna get into that in a moment guys everything will become clear all right and again as i mentioned to you before this is a document i was talking about to visualize or predict what type of slope not what the slope is now guys to determine what type of slope a line has we will simply have to visualize ourselves going up or down a hill and so as you can see here going from left to right the cyclist has to push a positive slope all right so from left here as you can see from left towards the right he has to push a positive slope and of course as you can see here from right to left he has to go from going down a hill and here is a zero slope all right now there are two methods in which we can calculate the gradient of a line and so therefore we have what is known as the graphical method which is going to be very very important guys and of course from the graphical method we can derive a theoretic formula to find the gradient of a line all right now we are half an hour into our uh, tutorial here you can it's free for you to go ahead and pause the video take a little break take a drink break that was a lot of knowledge there for you and you can return and come back we're gonna get right into the more technical applications of coordinate geometry all right let's go all right guys so here for the graphical method now all right in order for us to apply the graphical method or technique towards calculating the gradient or the steepness of a line we have to do what is known as creating a right triangle that subtends the line all right so we simply create a right triangle with any two points on the line and it doesn't have to be the start and the end it could be anywhere in the middle once you create a right angle triangle connecting those two points then basically what you have done is that you have created what is known as the rise and the fall all right the rise or fall as well as the run now why we say rise or fall is because a lot of the times um the ambiguity of using the word rise implies to student that is always something that goes up but we have what is known as a negative rise which we refer to as the fall all right so once you've created the right angle triangle the vertical distance of the right angle triangle will create what is known as the rise or fall and the horizontal aspect of the right triangle will create the run all right now it says here that since the gradient is a change in y with respect to x then we simply then then a simple way of finding the gradient is to divide the distance of the rise or fall by the distance of the run all right 
please note that the gradient of a line is indicated by a common letter which we use as M. All right, so look out for this M in the future. You're going to see it a lot. M is the symbol that represents a gradient. All right, so basically that's the formula that we're looking at here. See, here I have a line. Here's my Y axis and here's my X axis. And I just have a random line here that is going across X. We're not seeing the bottom half, but yes, it's going to cross the Y axis. But here I have a line and what I've done here is that I've selected two points. One is here and one is basically here. And what I've done is that I've created a right triangle that subtends the two points, all right, that connects the two points. And so this distance here is known as my rise or fall, and this distance here is my run. So if you were to calculate this using a, say for example, a one-to-one -one scale, then my rise distance here would have been, let's say here, one unit, two unit, three unit, and I'm actually going in a downwards direction. So for this particular line here, my rise, or in this case, my fall is going to be negative three. And now I'm running towards this direction. I'm only running one unit. So that's one. So for this particular line here, the slope here is going to be minus three for this particular. And pardon me, this is actually negative one because I'm going in the left direction so my slope of this line here is a positive three now very important guys i'm not sure if i've mentioned how important it is direction of your values are going to be important so if you're going down it's negative if you're going to the left it's negative if you're going up it's positive if you're going to the right it's positive so be careful of your signs because you may or may not get the slope forward slash steepness of the line correct. So for this particular line, the slope is three. Let's take a look at some more application questions here as it relates to this. So for this one here now, I have a straight line that passes through the points minus two, one, as you can see here, minus two, one, right? Minus two, up one. And I also have another point somewhere on the line that is at the position four, that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, four, negative five. Now, for me to demonstrate and for us to do this successfully, all we have to do here is just to create a right triangle that pretty much subtends the line or subtends the point. And here's my right triangle. Now, I have a choice to do it on the bottom half or i could do it on the top half so here i'm going to change my ink and i'm going to just do it on the top half here here's my rise i'm going to rise from this direction right and i'm going to run in this direction and you're going to see that no matter which direction you take it from right you're going to always get the same answer so let's have a look at the formula here we know that the gradient m is equal to rise slash fall over run so this time now we're gonna see if we're rising or are we falling from this side here we are falling how much are we falling what's the unit of the fall one two three four five six so m is equal to a fall of six and the run here I'm going to run towards my point, so I'm running to my right. All right, so I'm falling, so that's negative six, and I'm running to my right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm running positive six. So when I divide negative six by six, I find that the slope of this line here is equal to minus one. All right, if we were to go on the other side now, all right, just in case you guys may be questioning, is it is the case where I have to go on the left side or the right side it doesn't matter as long as you have a right triangle so once again here my rise forward slash fall divided by my run okay so my m here is equal to let's see if i'm rising or falling here i'm rising so i'm rising six one two three four five six so that's positive six but this time as you can see i'm running to my left so because i'm running to my left 
here you're going to find that it's negative. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's negative 6. And again, you can see that we reduced our answer once again to being equal to minus 1. So as it relates to the direction in which you choose to draw your right triangle, it does matter. Now, if you happen to be on a Cartesian plane where you have more than one lines, try to construct your diagram in a direction that's not going to interrupt with the line. All right. But it does not matter which side the right angle triangle is on. So hopefully you guys got some clarity on that demonstration there. All right. Now, I do have some examples. I will leave a link in the description to a page on Google where you can find practice questions on the questions as it relates to finding the gradient using the graphical method. All right. So here we go now, guys. In addition to the graphical method, now that's pretty easy. I know that you guys have that locked down. Now, in addition to the graphical method, we can actually use coordinate variables to derive a formula. Now, we did say earlier that the gradient forward slash the slope of the line is a change in y with respect to a change in x. Now, the word change implies subtraction, the difference. A change means the difference between two single ordinate values or coordinates or points. All right. So here we have derived a formula now. Typically, when you get a line to be drawn, you're going to be provided with two pairs of points, two pairs of points. All right. And so the pair of point is going to be in the form X1, Y1. All right. See, I've labeled it here in two different colors. Once you get a line to draw, you're going to be provided with a point. And we're going to call the first point or the starting point, so to speak, as the x1 and y1 values. I typically tell my students that the x1 and y1 is the starting point, but that does that is not necessarily perhaps say true. We can look at what, let's say that you're in a class and someone sits beside you and they decided to call the point to which you are calling the starting point. What if they wanted to call it the ending point? That is also fine. You can choose, but typically, typically, you're going to find that the starting point of the line is x1, y1, and the ending point is x2, y2. Now, since there is going to be a change in the y value with respect to the x value, then you can see here that we have y2, and we're finding the difference between the y ordinate values of the point. So that's y2, take away y1. So that's the change. That's this subtraction is going to tell me the, the, the unit distance between the y ordinate values. All right. And then that's a change. All right. That's going to develop. That's going to calculate the, 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 the unit value of the rise forward slash fall divided by the run here, which is a difference between the x ordinate values. That is x2 take away x1. And that is our standardized gradient formula, the formula theoretically that we can apply later on when we are not on graph. All right. So over here, you can see now how we construct the formula. It is the difference between the y ordinate that is y2 take away y1 divided by x2 take away x1. And that is how we pretty much construct this formula. But this is not a very difficult formula to remember. Try to get it up here in the head, guys. It's very easy. It's not a formula provided to you by uh, C -sec C -C -C, right? It's a formula that must be mentally in your head. So you have to work on getting that up there, guys. All right. So it's y2 take away y1 over x2 take away x1. Let's look at some structured examples, guys, as it relates to this. Now, I am assuming based on the time that we have left and how many practice questions I have, this is going to be the last set of explanations in this particular video. So if you want to see part two of this tutorial, ensure that you are subscribed to the channel. Your post notification bell is on. <laughs> And if you've gotten some sort of value, some value from this tutorial here, leave me a like. And of course, leave your video, video requests, suggestions down into the comment section box below. All right. So here we go. We have here a question that says, given that the point A 
two five and the and the of course the point b five one right determine the gradient of the line that connects the point a with the point b now we are not on graph so there's no point in us actually drawing up a cartesian plane plot, plotting the point a plotting the point b doing your rise doing the run there's actually a formula that we can actually write down and that's what we had determined earlier that the m gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 now before i forget i strongly guys i strongly recommend that i find that quite a bit of my students in the past they like to actually um they like to actually look at the numbers and transfer it down here i strongly recommend that you practice get into the habit of actually labeling your points before you start your substitution so i strongly encourage students to see this is x1 y1 and you're going to find that in all of my tutorial no matter how good it is that i may be at work in the problems i always tend to uh i always tend to leave my points all right that's how i normally go about doing it and then from there now guys all i do is that i take my time and i look at my label and i transfer the points down here now you gotta also understand that sometimes you're gonna end up with signs clashing so it's very very important that you practice to do this and not only do you practice to write down your formula when you're writing down the formula for every question that you practice the formula is is slowly but surely being processed by your permanent memory it's going to go in and it's never going to come out but if you try to do it without using the formula then you're going to find yourself getting um a bit tied up most of the time all right so we're just going to carefully plot our points substitute our values our ordinate values into our equation all right so here we have y2 which we can see here is one take away uh y1 here which is five and divided by x2 value which is five take away x1 value which is two and when we work this out here you're going to find that one take five is negative four and five take two is three so the slope or the slope value of our line here is minus four thirds now in the event that you wish to turn it into a decimal that's going to be minus one point three three recurring okay but we typically don't use decimal places when it comes to coordinate geometry so hopefully you guys got a hang of that let's move on to some more practice questions here a straight line passes through the points minus 2, 7 and 3, negative 4. Our task is to determine the gradient of this line. So once again, gradient formula is m equal y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So here we have m, let's label our points, x1, y1 x2 y2 so y2 label is negative 4 and we're subtracting the y1 value which is 7 so we're subtracting 7 and the x2 value here is 3 and here's where we're gonna have to be a little careful now so the x2 value is 3 and now watch what we're doing here is that we're subtracting a negative number so we're subtracting negative 2 and this is what I was talking about earlier about the sign clash here. Once you miss that sign clash or you tend to write down an incorrect value, there goes the incorrect value for your gradient. So just be a little careful with that. Negative 4 minus 7, that's minus 11. And negative clashes with a negative becomes a positive. So we end up with 3. Instead of take away 2, we're going to add 2. So we end up with five and so that is the slope value of our line negative 11 over five all right pretty good pretty easy you guys got this let's move on to another example now i had mentioned to you before in our first example that the importance of 
actually writing down your formula because remember that the gradient formula is an equation. So you're not necessarily going to always be asked to calculate the gradient depending on the level of math you're doing. At the CSEC level, I've seen where questions come across where you're not necessarily asked to calculate the gradient, but you're asked to calculate an ordinate value that is in one of your points. Now in this example here, you can see that we are told what the gradient is. We are told that, hey, given that the gradient of a line is equal to five. So here we are told that the gradient is in fact five. So we know what M is. We already know that M is equal to five. All right. Now it says here in reverse that we are to determine the value of the X ordinate given that it passes through the point five minus three. And in fact, hey, this ordinate value is missing. So how are we going to solve a question like this where we don't have the actual ordinate value? Well, we have to practice to write down our equation and do proper substitution. So we're going to start off by writing down our formula that is m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now the gradient here is 5. All right, so we're going to have 5 is equal to, and before we proceed, let's go ahead and label our points. Now, even though one of the ordinate values is missing, we're still gonna label it as being what? Let's say here, x1, y1, and this is x2. So basically x2 is missing and y2. So we're basically going to transpose the equation here to find the x2 ordinate value. So y2, you can see here is two, and we're going to take away y1, which is a negative three. So that's two take away negative three. And that's gonna be divided by x2, which is the value that we're missing. So that's x take away x1, which is five, all right? So we're gonna be solving an equation. And this is where your application, this is where algebra comes into play now. Right, we're gonna have to learn how to solve equations. The video link is in the description box below. Check that video out if you're struggling with solving equations. I have a couple more equation videos coming out, so do look out for that, guys. But you have to ensure that you are subscribed to the channel to be notified. Okay, so here we go. Let's work out what we can. We have five is equal to, let's evaluate the top. Negative multiplied by negative is a positive. So two plus three is five. And that's going to be divided by, clearly, I cannot subtract 5 from x. Let's just write that a little bigger. So that's 5 over x minus 5. So how do we proceed in solving this particular equation? We can multiply both sides by x minus 5, or naturally what I have found a lot of my students say is that they're going to cross multiply. So we're going to cross multiply here, okay? So by cross multiplying here, we're going to find that 5 should multiply x, so that's 5x, and 5 is going to multiply negative 5, so we end up with negative 25. And that's going to be equal to 1 multiplied by 5, and that's equal to 5. That is how we cross multiply. Now, of course, I did a video on how to solve basic equations like this. So here, transposing negative 25, we end up with 5x being equal to 5 plus 25, so we end up with 5x being equal to, hey, 30. So if we divide both sides by 5, then you're going to find that the x ordinate value here works out to be 6. All right, really nice improvised question here using the gradient formula. It comes up a lot, all right? You cannot really put anything past CSEC you have to be prepared for all variations of question. And this is just one of many that is coming up in this particular tutorial. Let's do an example now where we are actually finding a Y ordinate value. So here, we have just made it a little bit more challenging by making the gradient a fraction. So we're gonna add a little bit of complexity to the problem now. So here again, given that the gradient of the line is equal to three quarters, so there we have our M, M, is actually equal to three quarters, all right, three quarter, 
All right. So now we are to determine the value of the y ordinate value now, given that it passes through the points 2, y, and 4, negative 1. What is the value that is supposed to go here that will cause the gradient of this line to be equal to 3 quarters? We start off naturally by saying, hey, m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We set this up, guys. All right. So we're going to go right ahead and do some substitution. m, we know, is 3 quarters. So that's 3 over 4. All right. Write it properly, guys. All right. Write it as a fraction like so. So let's label our points as usual. All right. This is x1, y1, and this is x2, y2. So clearly you can see it's the y1 value that is missing. So we are looking for y1. So here we go. y2 is negative 1. And we're going to take away y1 value, which we see is labeled as y, over x2, which is 4. And we're going to take away 2. We're going to take away 2 from that. So that's x1 value. Let's go up here. So now we have 3 quarters. And we can work out what is at the top. Well, in fact, we can't work out what is at the top. So that's just minus 1 minus y. Over, we can work out what is at the bottom. 4 take away 2 is 2. All right. Remember that we cannot subtract, subtract unlike terms. So we can't do much to that. Now, what we can do now, though, is that we end up with an equation, a fractional equation. We're going to have to cross multiply. So here we go. We can start with any side. I'm going to start with the 4. All right. Since as this is taking me in the direction of my subject. So 4 multiplied by negative 1. 4 multiplied by negative 1 is negative 4. And of course, remember that the 4 also has to multiply the negative y. So you end up with negative 4y. And that's going to be equal to, we cross multiply in this direction. 3 times 2 is 6. Now, naturally, we solve this equation here. Transpose the negative 4. So we end up with negative 4y is equal to 6 plus 4. So we end up with negative 4y is equal to 10. All right, I'm running out of space here, guys. So let's see if we can drop it somewhere in the middle here. So negative 4y is equal to 10. In the middle here, negative 4y. So we can divide both sides by 4. So we're going to find here that y is equal to 10 divided by negative 4, which we worked out to be, as a decimal, it would be negative 2.5. As a fraction, it would naturally be negative 5 over 2 all right it would be negative 5 over 2 so both answers are acceptable so the y ordinate value here is negative 5 over 2 all right so tough question mm, it really depends on how much you know about the concept or how much you know about the topic all right so let's let me know in the comment section guys and if you have any concerns feel free to just replay the video and just kind of focus a little bit give it a try before you actually watch my solution and when you've done look at my solution and see if it matches with yours all right and basically now we're gonna wrap up this aspect of the tutorial video now by looking at drawing a line so here is a different structure type of question now. Here we are being asked to go on the graph and we're going to actually draw the line that contains a slope of four, pardon me, three, negative four, two thirds and negative three fifths. What if you were to get, what if you were given a question where you are to draw the line that contains a certain slope, but you weren't given the actual points? Now, what I like about this structured type of question is that I am free to draw the line anywhere on the Cartesian plane that I desire, right? Because anywhere on the Cartesian plane that the line is, it will still have the same exact gradient. Remember that the gradient of a line is not determined by the quadrant that the line is in, but it determines on the steepness of the line wherever the line is on the Cartesian plane. Now, in order for you to do an actual structured example, and I'm almost certain that I, in my regular classes, right, if you're watching this tutorial video, you can find all the information related to how to get in touch with me to join my regular live classes, right? You can check out that. But when I'm teaching my students, I don't think that I actually taught them a concept like this, but this is very, very important here, guys, that this question could come. 
so what you can do now guys is that you just choose a specific point of intersection on the cartesian plane here for you to draw your line Let's choose a specific location it doesn't matter so i'm just gonna choose here all right i'm gonna start my point here all right and i need a slope of three so it means that for me to have a slope of three it means that i have to be able to have a rise that will div I will I would have to have a rise that can be divided by the run to give me three so let's say that I choose a number randomly let's say I choose six it would mean that I would have to go up six directions so that's one two three four five six whatever number you choose whatever distance you choose to travel upwards there has to be a number that if you divide that number by uh, the x value then you're gonna get three so if I choose six I have to ask myself what can I divide six by to get three so I choose one two three four five six if I basically divide six by two I'll get three so I'm just gonna travel two units so I could put a point here and then basically here you're gonna find here that this is a line that replicates a slope of three. So here, all right? So here, that's my line, all right? So you can see that my rise is six and my run is two. So six divided by two, six divided by two is three. All right, and that line could be anywhere on the Cartesian plane. Just you have to choose a number that once it divides by another number, then you're going to get the result that you're looking for here. Right? I could have chosen 12. And so if I divide 12 by 4, I would have gotten, I would have gotten a gradient of 3. Second example here, I need a gradient of negative 4. So I know right away, let's say that I put a point here. All right, I need a number that when I divide it by another number, I'm gonna get four. So let's say that I choose eight, all right? I need eight, I need a negative gradient, so I need to go, hey, let's put it here instead, all right? Sometimes, depending on where the point of the location that you choose, you may end up have to re relocate that point because you may not have enough distance on your graph to travel. So I need to have a negative rise, all right? Or a negative run, all right? One of the two. So if I rise positively, I'm going to have to run negatively. Or if I run, if I run, pardon me, if I rise negatively, I'm going to have to run positively. And if I rise positively, I'm going to have to run negatively. So you have to do the opposite. So here I need a number that I know can be divided by another number to give me four. I'm, going, I'm just going to choose eight. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to fall eight. I'm going to go one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here I'm going to fall eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, fall eight. And then because I fall eight, that's already negative. I need to run, I need to run two because if I divide eight by two, I'm gonna get four. So I'm gonna run two here and that's my location here. All right, so if I go like so, Okay, this particular line here would have a slope. So you can see here that my rise is negative eight and my run is two. So eight divided by two, neg sorry, negative eight divided by two is negative four. Over here, you can see that six divided by three is two. All right, so there we go guys what i want you to do for me in another in another in the next tutorial which is part two i'm gonna pick up on this here as a recap for part one for you guys so i'm gonna do here two thirds and three fifths negative three fifths in the next tutorial video all right so we are just about an hour over into this particular video do take care until next time in part two we're gonna talk more about the gradient midpoint length of a line so on and so forth all right do not forget to smash the subscribe button below turn on the post notification bell leave me a like if you've gotten some value from the video and of course leave your comments video requests and suggestions down in the box below do take care i'll see you next time Bye bye